Welcome to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church this morning. We're glad that you are here. Uh, please join us and follow along. Your parts of the service will be printed at the bottom of the screen. We'll begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness. Confessing together. Lord, we confess our lack of faith. We see a glimpse of what we ought to be and we know we fall short of the goal. We desire faith that is solid and unchanging, yet we crumble under trials and temptations. We want to be strong, but we know our own weakness. Our sinful condition strips us of any spiritual gain that we humanly devise. Lord, forgive us. Accept us as we are, unworthy for the task, yet gifted for your purposes. Give us your gift of faith. Our God is a great God and knows our needs for all areas of our life. God knows our weakness and our unbelieving hearts, yet loves us enough to die on a cross and provide forgiveness of our sin. Now the focus is not on the faith that we can muster, but on the great gifts that our Lord gives daily as we live in trust. God has given us the gift of faith, faith for the moment, faith for every trial, faith for every temptation, faith for every difficult situation. Praise God for this inexpressible gift of faith. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in praying the prayer of the day, which is printed on the screen. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will. 
The first reading is found in 1 Kings chapter 19. At that place, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Mahol. Mahola as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is found in Matthew chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get out of the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Jesus got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Hi, kids. Today, the scripture verses that we heard talk about fears, and there's lots of different kinds of fears. When a lot of us think of fears, we think of things like the fact that I am afraid of clowns. I think they're terrifying. I don't see any happiness about them. They just give you, completely creep me out and have been since I was a young child. Um, I also am very much afraid of those ceramic dolls that lots of grandmas have in their curio cabinets. I can't handle them looking at me. It, ugh, I just, I don't like it. And I have a friend, his name is Ron, and he's absolutely afraid of spiders. He can't talk about spiders. He can't see pictures of spiders. If there is a spider near him, he completely freaks out, just can't even move, freaks out. Um, but the fears that we're talking about in the, in the passages are fears that really affect our everyday life. Clowns don't really affect my everyday life. Those little dolls don't, spiders don't. But sometimes people are afraid of things like expressing their feelings for, towards people, or they're afraid of failing, or they're afraid of um, being laughed at. Those are things that affect our daily life. So what this Matthew verse teaches us is that we shouldn't be afraid of things. I mean, it's okay to be afraid of spiders. It's really okay to be afraid of clowns and you're not gonna convince me otherwise. But some of the things it's not okay to be afraid of is 
is failing or is meeting new friends or is sharing an opinion you have and afraid of being laughed at those things affect us greatly now other things other things that we're afraid of don't really affect us so much but um jesus says to peter uh, in that verse he says take heart it is i do not be afraid and when peter becomes afraid and he starts sinking in the water jesus says you of little faith why do you doubt and we need to remember those things um, we need to remember that jesus is on our side we need to remember that with him all things are possible so when we have a big test coming up and we're we're really afraid to take that or when we have to meet new people or when you're older and you have to go on job interviews remember that jesus is by your side remember that he is in your heart and he is for you and that you don't need to be afraid you just need to do your best and give thanks so anyhow just remember that kids amen let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered. Under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Maker and our Redeemer. Amen. There is um, a lot to be afraid of these days. And many people are dealing with all different kinds of fears. The most pressing, most immediate that most people or many people are facing is the pandemic, the global pandemic and COVID-19. The fear of being infected with that virus, the fear of getting sick with that virus, and the fear of dying because of that virus. There are fears about the economy, the way the economy has free fallen over the last months and people's jobs have been lost, are in jeopardy. People's family incomes, especially now at the end of a stimulus package, are in question. Rent, food, housing, bills, um, there's a lot that people are afraid of. People are afraid of the politics of today. People are afraid to say anything for fear they will offend someone or say something that is not politically correct and will be lambasted in response. People are afraid of demonstrations, demonstrations that have turned in some cases violent and become riots. There are so many things around us that make us fearful. And we always think of them as bad, but the reality is fear was something that is part of humanity. Fear is something that was created within us uh, long ago before any of this stuff existed. People's adrenaline would spike when there was some situation that came up that put their life in danger. And the adrenaline rises to create the energy to run and escape or the energy to stand and protect one's self. Adrenaline is part of who we are. And though that was something that was really important thousands of years ago in human development, that's something that has carried over to today. In the Gospel lesson and in the Old Testament story, we see fear demonstrated in both stories. 
In the Elijah story, it's so interesting because Elijah has just come off of this incredible experience on Mount Carmel, where the prophets of Baal and Elijah had this kind of spiritual duel. And they each set up an altar and each called to their God, the prophets of Baal to Baal and Elijah to Yahweh, to the Lord God Jehovah. And as the story progresses, ultimately, Elijah's offering is received by God when fire comes down from heaven and consumes the offering that Elijah laid up. And Elijah had those prophets eliminated. Well, Queen Jezebel was not happy. She was a worshiper of Baal. And she sent a message immediately to Elijah saying, may your life be the same as one of theirs by this time tomorrow. And the Bible says, Elijah feared for his life. And so what did he do? Adrenaline, flee or fight. Elijah fled and he fled into the wilderness and he found himself at a cave in the southern part of Sinai. And in that cave, he had this new experience. He'd been complaining, God, I'm the only one left that worships you. Everybody else is, has left me and they're worshiping Baal and they've torn down your altars and life is, is horrible. Take away my life, he says. I am no better than my father's before me. And God comes to Elijah in this cave and says, Elijah, what are you doing? And Elijah recites that same litany. And God says, you are not alone. There are 7,000 people in this nation that are still worshiping me. Now go and do the things that I want you to do. Do the things that I tell you to do. And then fast forward several hundred years to the disciples. After once again, they had seen this incredible experience of Jesus feeding 5,000 maybe 10,000 or more people with five loaves and two fish. They'd seen this incredible experience and Jesus still wanted to stay behind. He was still grieving the death of John and still needed some alone time. So he sent the disciples back to Capernaum and he stayed in the desert, climbed up a mountain to pray, to spend time with God. As the disciples rode back to Capernaum, a storm arose. The Sea of Galilee is a very shallow sea. It's really a lake. And a storm can brew up very quickly on the Sea of Galilee. And so it happened on that day. And they rode and they were fighting against the waves and the wind all night long. And in the morning, the waves were still splashing. And Jesus, who had stayed behind, was going to rejoin the disciples. Except this time Jesus came walking to them on the water. And it totally freaked them out. The Bible says they were terrified. Not just afraid. They were terrified. They thought it was a ghost. And Peter, seeing Jesus, wanting to know if it truly was Jesus or if it was a ghost, said, Jesus, if it's really you, bid me come to you walking on the water. And Jesus said, okay, Peter, come and join me. Peter is like Elijah, fleeing, getting out of this boat that's sinking, that is, that's, that's struggling in the waters. And Peter steps out of the boat and he starts walking toward Jesus. And then he once again becomes absolutely frightened. He becomes afraid because he sees the waves around him and the wind, he feels the wind blowing and he begins to sink into the water and he cries out the shortest prayer in the Bible, help! And Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed Peter and lifted him and said, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And ultimately, that is the solution to all our fears. Elijah, 
the disciples, Peter specifically, all those things around us in our lives, why do we doubt that we are not alone? That this God who loves us absolutely from whom we can never be separated is here with us at all times and in all circumstances. Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? There is fear and that is real. It's built into us. But the answer to fear is to have faith. To have faith that God will get us through, that God will be with us, that God will not leave us alone in any circumstance, that we are always in God's care. Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Have faith. And then like God told Elijah, go and do the things that I want you to do. Amen.
Once again, please join me in prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. We remember John, Anne, Ben, Wendy, Ted, Tom, Jason and Paul. And especially today, we remember Mary Beth and her family on the death of Mary Beth's father, Larry Sutton. Keep them in your care all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church, from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I want to invite you to our Wednesday evening worship services outside on our north lawn at 6 o'clock uh, each Wednesday. Please uh, stay in touch, watch our website if there are any changes in that schedule or availability. We are also continuing to do communion services for small groups of 10 people. Um, we will do that on Tuesdays at noon and Thursday at 6 o'clock. You do need to sign up in advance. Um, and uh, just it's a first come, first serve, but I encourage you, uh, please sign up and be a part of one of these small groups of communion. And then this coming week, we will be uh, collecting school supplies for our annual school drive. Because of the diverse learning situations that will exist this year, that list is a little different than it usually is. So please check the list um, on our website. There will be a box in the entryway at our west entrance where you can place any donations of school supplies. And then once again, a reminder that on Sunday, August 16th, we're planning on meeting uh, on our north lawn once again for an outdoor worship service at 9.30. Uh, keep a tab on our website in case there are any changes in that schedule or in case there is inclement weather. Those are the announcements. Please receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.